Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the May 24th uh, Planning uh, Commission meeting. Recommendations from the Planning Commission on certain items from this agenda will be considered by the Board of Commissioners at the regular meeting on June 1st, uh, 2021 at 10.30 a.m. Note that the Planning Commission utilizes speaker request forms which are available in the Commission Chambers during the meeting. So if you are someone other than the applicant or the agent for the applicant on any of the items uh, and you wish to speak on an item, um, we would ask that you fill out the speaker request forms and turn them in uh, up front here and, and they get passed down to me. It keeps me uh, Keeps me um, organized. Um, with that, first item on the agenda is is the roll call for today. Note that everyone is here, less Jim, and Gary is here from the board. First item on the agenda is approval of the May 10th, 2021 minutes. Is there any changes or corrections to the minutes? Sure. Go ahead, sir. I, I think on uh, items 9 and 10, the vote should have been reflected as 4 and 0. I think it's just a typographical error. I noted the same thing. Further questions or corrections? Hearing none, seeing none. Um, noting the two uh, changes that appear to be typos on the number of people voting on 9 and 10, uh, is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item is the approval of the May 17th, 2021 minutes. Are there any changes or corrections to the minutes of that meeting? Seeing none, entertain a motion for approval. So move. Second. Motion and second, further discussion. Seeing none and hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Next item is approval of today's agenda. Today's agenda consists of the consent agenda items four and five, um, followed by normal uh, items uh, six through 18, um, and then 19 through 23 are our standard end of meeting items. Are there any changes that anyone has to the agenda? Seeing none, um, I would note just for everyone's that as I was reading the agenda on item, or maybe it was in the uh, packet on item 16. I want to say that the, there was a mismatch on the the heading of item 16 in the packet. So just note that I think that I think that the agenda is correct, but the packet may be slightly off. Let's see if I can get to the specifics. Seem to find it right now. I just I had made a note of it when I in, when I was reviewing it. So when we get to that item, we can convert then. Any changes to today's agenda? Mr. Chair, move to approve the agenda. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion. Seeing none. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to the consent agenda. Good morning, Commissioners. Brittany Molitor, Planning Director. The following items have been placed on the consent agenda for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. 
The findings of this planning commission on certain items from this agenda are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decision. Item number four is conditional use permit review CU 1801 for Ron Weifenbach to review a seasonal retail sales of Class C fireworks in the general commercial district. Staff recommends approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1801 with conditions. Item number five is conditional use permit review CU 1814 for All American Sales. Doug Bellinger is the agent to review a seasonal retail sales of Class C fireworks in a heavy industrial district. And staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1814 with conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff on these items? Does anyone in the audience wish to speak on either of these items? For those that are uh, not familiar with our process here in the meeting, uh, items four and five are on the consent agenda, so they will be voted on at the same time. Noting that uh, no one wishes to speak on these items, recommendation is from staff is for approval um, of these of the consent agenda. Is there a motion? I so move. I second. Motion and second. Further discussion. Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor, uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item six. Good morning, Commissioner Chutima Sabun Planning Department. Uh, item number five is a conditional use permit CU 2123 to allow a guest house on the subject property. The applicants are Rod and Teresa Cassidy. Mr. Cassidy is in the audience today if you have any question for him. The subject property is 1.09 acres and zone rural residential district. Access is off of River River View Court. The property consists of a, a single family residence and an attached garage with a man cave. Um, and the the garage with the man cave was uh, constructed in. Uh, 2017 with an approved uh, building permit. However, the man cave was later constructed into a living space without an approved building permit, which created a violation case. There are two separate violation case. One is for living quarters in the garage. The other is for the uh, for a suspected front yard setback violation. Um, this conditional use permit was continued from the February 22nd, 2021 Planning Commission meeting to allow the applicant time to work and discuss option with the planning department. And the update from the last meeting, the applicant has worked with staff regarding the requested use and issue on the, on the property. The more appropriate uh, requested use for the property appear to be uh, to be to allow a multiple family dwelling on the subject property instead of to allow a guest house, because the applicant stated that the living quarters in the attached garage is occupied by his mother-in-law, and the second issue that. Um, because there's a violation of a suspected front yard setback violation. Um, the county ordinance enforcement officer did a site visit on May 5th and verified that the attached garage met the minimum front yard setback requirement of the property zoning district. So this, the, the first violation is clear. Um, and the applicant has been worked, working with staff to upgrade the um, the septic system, uh, the on-site wastewater treatment system. Staff recommends to continue conditional use permit CU 2123 to no later than the November 22nd um, planning, commission, planning Commission meeting to allow the applicant time to bring the property into compliance. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff on this item? I have a question, Mr. Chair. On 
this probably doesn't have anything to do with continuing, but if you look at the, the picture up on the screen and the arrow to the, to the garage, it appears that the garage is on a different lot. Is that correct, incorrect? Um, this one, the picture that you see is an aerial map. And with the aerial map, it's not survey quality because there's a, um, many factors, you know, like the time that the plane fly. So this is just for entertainment <coughs> purpose only. And the applicant had a variance uh, for the attached garage in 2017 for the side yard to reduce right. um, the setback. Yeah. Okay, I just thought it looked like it really overlapped quite <laughs> yes. a bit, so I thought I'd ask. Yeah. Um, staff recommends to continue uh, this item to no later than the November 22nd, 2021 meeting, but did, you said the applicant was in the audience today. Yes. Um, the, the applicant, do you wish to speak on this item or are you okay with us continuing it? Thank you. So staff recommends to continue conditional use permit item CU21-03 to no later than November 22nd, 2021. Uh, to allow the applicant time to bring the property into compliance. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item seven. Item six is a conditional use permit twenty one twenty three to allow a special. Fatima, thing. I think that we're on item seven. Oh yes, I'm so sorry. Just clarify. Yep, yep. Item seven. Oh, and actually, the um, the document that Jerry just handed out to you is for number seven, not number six. Correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you for correction. Yeah, no problem. Uh, so item seven, a conditional use permit, CU twenty one twenty three to allow a specialty resort on the subject property. The applicant is Mr. Uh, Mark Erickson, and I believe that he is on the screen um, via the Zoom if you have any question for him. The subject property is 11.6 acres and zone agriculture district. The access is off of Highway 40 via an easement, and that is a special flood hazard on the air on the property. All existing structures appear to be located outside of the flood block boundary. There are seven criteria of approving uh, for approving conditional use permit, and the criteria are on the screen. Um, and I will read the findings. Criteria one, a specialty resort take, takes place within an existing resident and a, an existing bunkhouse. So it should not be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare of the public. Criteria two, this conditional use permit should not have any long-term negative effects on the use and enjoyment of other properties in the Im immediate vicinity. Staff cannot predict the effect of the, neighbor the property value in the neighborhood. Criteria three, allowing this conditional use permit should not significantly affect the normal and orderly development and improvement of the surrounding property for uses permi permitted in the district. Criteria four, it appears all necessary utilities are already in place for the specialty resort. Criteria five, access is off of the highway, highway 40 via an existing approach and via the easement. Criteria six, the properties, uh, the, pro the current zoning is agriculture district. The subject property is 11.6 acres, which meets the minimum lot size requirements of the zoning district. Specialty resort is allowed with an approved conditional use permit. Criteria number seven, the future land use of the subject property is uh, agriculture district. The subject property 
consists of a single family residence, uh, a bunkhouse, and a barns. The, the applicant recently upgraded the on-site wastewater treatment system, and the request was routed uh, for inter interdepartmental review. Emergency services has a concern um, regarding the property's address. This will address as a condition of approval. And this morning, before I come down for the meeting, the applicants uh, email the email staff with the picture of the address that posting on the um, on the residence and on the bunk house and also at the approach um, um, at the end of the driveway. The South Dakota uh, DANR approved the existing waste water treatment uh, wastewater system to allow a maximum overnight occupancy of 18 people. April 29th, uh, staff performed a site visit and has verified that the requested use meets the requirement of Pennington County zoning ordinance. Staff received an email of concerns from the neighbors and um, the email, the the applicant's neighbor email is in the package. Uh, staff recommends approval of conditional use permit CU 2123 with 15 conditions. Thank you. Questions for staff on this item? Go ahead, Kathy. Um, you know, the, the, the maps, the photographs from the images from Rapid Map show this property located off of Highway 44 near Johnson Siding. And I'm just yes. I put the wrong map in there. I'm sorry. Okay. I didn't catch up. It's supposed to be it's highway off 40. of highway um, forty. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. So the I apologize. Yeah, that's all right. I was just a little mixed up on it all. But um, so the location is correctly shown on the map that's within the. Anyway, it's this one. I don't know what. It's, yes. It doesn't have a page number, but. So that's the correct. So in other words, it's south. It's located south of Highway 40. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> all right. I apologize. That's all right. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Question. So am I understanding that the uh, new septic tank, would re the old one would be removed completely in a completely new correct. concrete? Okay. Yep. Yep, and that, that is correct. And uh, um, the document that uh, you just received, that one is a uh, approved on-site wastewater treatment system. It's a new, new, new system. Okay. Thank you. You. <clears throat> Mr. Um, Chair, go ahead, Charlie. Um, and we've talked about this before, uh, Chutima. Um, I have problems when when our um, vacation home and uh, resort people want to have fires. And I think if we look at the, they've included instructions to the residents that they're bringing on, uh, on that uh, the sh welcome to the ranch at Keystone. And it says, please always check to see if there is a burn ban in effect before you use the firing. On both of the uh, committees that worked on vacation home rental and, and, and whatnot. It was extremely concerning about fire. And I think we need to have something a little stronger in there that includes some follow up by the owner to give them the instructions how to find out on the burn ban. And you can do that several ways. The owner can be either signed up uh, on the system where they get a daily notice of the fire conditions as well as any fires going in the area and it gives you the, the specific burn restrictions that day. Or you can have a number and it could be also an internet uh, address to check so that that could be included in the instructions so these folks have some idea. If the place doesn't have internet, I would suggest the phone number. But we need to do something in our conditions that's stronger than just allowing it to be the responsibility of a person that isn't familiar with fire. We are. And, and I just think we need to include that in the conditions. Thank you. Further questions for staff? I just have one question. Go ahead. So the, what's the current use of this property? I mean, it's, these, these buildings were built some time ago? Yes. So what's the current use? 
Um, it's a uh, residential use. Okay. Yep. Then this building was built um in prior to 1994, and I believe it's like mm -hmm. 19. Let me check the um. <coughs> It, the single family resident was built in 1951. Yep. Uh -huh. I know. But I'm just curious about the other buildings, the mm -hmm. bunkhouse and the, the barns and so on, were they just essentially not used? Um, that will be the question for the applicant. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just curious about that. Um, can, Mr. Erickson, can you hear me? Yes, yes I can. I, I'm just wondering about the current use of the bunkhouse. Um, the current use of the bunkhouse was for family. When I would have family come that, um, you know, my house was pretty small and whatnot, and I would have family stay in the bunkhouse. Um, before that, it was a garage that I converted into a bunkhouse type <coughs> living quarters. I see. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, one more question, right. and you referred to it, but I, I don't know whether the rest of the commission got it, but the, um, where the inspection, wastewater inspection, uh, verification, whatnot, doesn't show that it's completed, it's not signed and dated and that sort of thing, the one in the book. I do have mm -hmm. a copy of the completed one, because that was one of my requests of the staff when I got here this morning. Um, so I didn't know whether, I can pass that along so that you'd... We you each got it. a copy. Okay, thank you. My question is, um, there's no there's notes in some of the text that this is uh, VHR, and okay. so my question is, what um, this is going to go in as a special to resort, and not a VHR? Is, Correct. What are the specific reasons on why why go one way or the other? Um, originally, the applicant requested to have a, to allow a vacation home rental on the property. <laughs> However, when I uh, staff did a site visit and um, it, the property did not meet the kind of requirement for the vacation home rental because the bedroom is um the minimum uh, the maximum requirement for the vacation home rental is five bedrooms, and then it's two people per bedroom. That the maximum occupancy will be te uh, overnight will be ten, but then um with the bunk house and the residence. And the maximum overnight um, that the South Dakota DANR approved that was um, 18. And the house, the resident itself already have four bedroom. Yep. So the more appropriate will be specialty resort. Okay. And staff spoke with the applicant and the applicant's uh, manager. Um, um, they, or, they, they already um, contacted the... Uh, South Dakota Department of Health and changed the application and I received the email verification from um, South Dakota Department of Health also that they, they, they are aware and they already changed the license from the vacation home rental to specialty resort. Okay, but for all intensive purposes, uh, the intent is uh, a VHR style uh, resort, um, not, not some other special use that isn't listed in the packet here. No. Okay. It's, oh, sorry. Do you have more you need to say? Okay. Um, um, from what I, I spoke with uh, the applicant's um, manager, it's pretty much like vacation home rental, but because of the, the maximum bed, bedrooms and up the, um, the occupancies, it just doesn't fit in the Pennington County uh, zoning ordinance for vacation home rental. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, um, just in comment regarding the email that we received that we received from a neighboring person, um, I I trust this won't create any more noise than normal. Or do you have access to that, sir? Yes. Okay. Where do I? The, the email from the uh, the. Um, from the uh, from the applicant's neighbor, yes. um, we the staff received it um, this morning. Also, it was it was sent to the the department's email um, on Saturday. So I didn't have a chance to give Mr. Erickson of the email. Okay, so Mr. Erickson, you haven't seen this email from a neighbor. Is that correct? 
Correct. Okay. Uh, could I just read you a sentence? Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay, all right. Uh, they indicate they are concerned with the type of specialty resort for which this will be zoned. If it includes anything that creates noise, we are against the zoning. We have not been pleased with Rushmore Cave activities. There's constant screaming from those who use the roller coaster and zip line. It's difficult for us to enjoy peaceful times on our property. Um, so I just wonder if you have any comment on this. And this was received from, looks like Daryl Gill. Is that correct? Yes, Daryl Gill. Thank you. Um, what I have to say about that is, you know, it's just a vacation home rental, basically, and as far as the noise and whatnot goes, you know, I'm not anticipating any noise at all. I've, uh, either I'm there or I have somebody around there all the time to monitor the house and the people going in and out and whatnot. And if there's anybody really making any racket or whatever, I run a clean show. So, you know, we just don't put up with that. I get along with all my neighbors very well. So I don't anticipate any problems like that at all. Thank you. Um, as, as far as the cave goes, you know, there is noise from the cave or whatever but you know it it doesn't really bother me i guess as bad as it bothers them at least you know <laughs> when people are hollering or screaming they're having fun so that makes me have a good day actually sounds good thank you thank you further questions for staff on this item Fair. go ahead if we approve this as a specialty resort are there other things that can take place on that property without coming back to to the county for approval that could create noise? Um, what I guess I'm saying, what does a specialty resort include? Let me, um, give, me give me one second, okay? Sure. So. While she's looking, Mr. Chair, Go I ahead, want Charlie. to note uh, in the applicant's behalf, uh, quiet hours are 10 p.m. to 7 a.m., and it's noted right on his um, thing that he hands to his clients. So, uh, 10 p.m. is is uh, is certainly a reasonable hour uh, to allow people to use their property. I did fill out a speaker thing, but I didn't put the number down. Yeah, I'll 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 get to you as soon as uh, the questions for true true team are are over. Nope, no problem. I can throw in though too. I was on when Rushmore got a number of their things, and noise is a factor from the the park. Okay. That's certainly involved. Let me get the first question: Is that the specialty resort? Um, So the South Dakota codify law um, state that any specialty resort establishment with the, so essentially it's 10 or more occupants um, that stay in the specialty resort. And it's, let me see, Ooh, one second. Oh. I went to the wrong page, sorry. Mr. Chair, while she's doing that, just to fill in time, may I read what I think should be, uh, in regards to the fire, should be included as a? Uh, please, uh, please. Okay, and I listed as number 15, which would switch 15 to number 16. The re resort shall provide the phone number and or internet address to clients regarding uh, ascertaining the current day's fire conditions prior to the use of the fire pit. Okay. 
known it? I found the definition. Go ahead. Okay. So um, the specialty resort is any bed and breakfast establishment except a bed and breakfast that are defined in um, another section is the large dude, dude ranch resort building or buildings used to provide accommodations and rec or recreation for a charge to the public with no more than 10 rental units for up to an average of 20 guests per night and in which meal are provided only guests staying that specialty resort. Thank yeah. you. So with that, and if you have a concern about the noise and um, um, staff would recommend to add an, a condition that the quiet hour will be from seven, uh, will be from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. And that's in his paperwork, right? That's in his paperwork. Yep. Okay, further questions for staff on this item before we go to the speaker request forms? Okay, first speaker request form I have is from uh, Dan and uh, Ar Arlette Schweitzer. If you want to state your name for the record in case I mispronounce things. <coughs> Thank you. Yes, Arlette, Dan Schweitzer. Uh, Mark has been our neighbor and, and we didn't mind him having a vacation home because uh, that I know he's not there a lot, and that's that was fine with us. But when we got the specialty resort, it did f put some fear in our heart because after the Rushmore Cave incident, we've lived on that property directly across from where Mark is for 30 years. And when we bought the property, it was just a couple of homes, a quiet cave, and cows. And uh, the specialty resort is what makes us a little bit afraid because. Uh, we just, we love our property, it's quiet, it would be all of a sudden if we had, uh, and say Mark sold it, could they, someone else come in and use it and put in a hotel or whatever. But right now, uh, our property, and we're also representing our son Kurt Schweitzer and his wife Sandy who are at work, they live directly across also from Mark. and. Uh, like I said, we weren't objecting to a vacation home and having a few people over there, but a, a, a resort just struck fear in our heart. Uh, uh, the noise from the cave, which is uh, already a done deal, is tremendous and it isn't pleasant. It's like living next to a scary movie all day long. Huh. And that The screaming is horrid and so we just couldn't possibly stand to have anything more uh, added that would create more noise or, or race cars or, or ATVs going up and down the, the ditches or whatever. So we're just a little worried about that. We want to know what the re specialty resort means. And I also agree with Mr. Johnson about the fire danger because we've lived through the Battle Creek fire and it's, that's a fear. So... Okay. If somebody could explain the specialty resort and, and assure us that it would never go any further or... So, um, Chutima listed a few things. Uh, what I heard was any bed and breakfast, a dude ranch, but it, basically a, a 20 guests per night um, restriction. Um, what I understand is the specific reason that this is coming through as a specialty resort versus a vacation home rental is strictly due to the number of people um, that are uh, that, that are possible to stay at the resort. Um, if this was a smaller deal, it would be coming through as a vacation home rental. Um, Mr. Uh, Erickson has indicated uh, in this meeting that the intent is that this will be a, a vacation home rental. Um, the, the question then is, is um, if he decides to change his mind uh, and come in for something else, or if he sells it and comes in for something else, there's some trigger points there. I think that uh, I would ask staff to confirm so I don't misspeak, but I, I think that there are some, uh, Brittany, if there's it, conditional use permits have to be uh, brought forth if there's a sale of the property, is that correct? And and continue, and, and, and can, could you go through that process? So Sure. The sale can... of the property has to do with vacation home rentals. Okay. If there's any major change um, to the conditional use permit and the type of use that's being 
um, done on the property, it would have to go through the amendment process, which is the same process as the original conditional use permit. So the neighbors would have to be notified of the changes of the uses. Um, and just to clarify and add on to what Chutima had said, because there's multiple structures that are being rented out, that's the other reason that it is under a specialty resort and not a vacation home rental, because a vacation home rental is somewhat singular in nature as far as one on a property where you have multiple structures that they're renting out on this property. Um, our understanding is that there's not any recreation per se on this property. It's much more to do with the number of people that are staying on the property and the number of structures that are being utilized for rental. Mr. Mr. Chair. You were first. Uh, Rydney, so if the property is sold, does the conditional use permit automatically transfer or would that have to be it stays with the property. Um, when the next review comes up, it will be reviewed under the new owners. Okay. Um, so the, the new information would have to be submitted. The new contact information would have to be submitted okay. to the office. Thank you. But the use would stay the same even if it transferred? Correct. Until it got reviewed again? Correct. And if they okay. wanted to make any major amendments to the uses that are established under what this was originally approved, then it would have to be re-advertised, re-noticed, and then a new hearing. Thank you very much, Charlie. Okay, just for the record, too, uh, DENR has limited this one to 18. Rather, the 20 doesn't become a factor That's correct. in this because the, the state of South Dakota has limited this one to 18 uh, in their uh, approval of the uh, septic system. Okay, 18 is even a lot across from us if, if you've got a bunch of kids. And I, I, I do worry about dirt bikes and and that type of noise because we've had it in the past. And is there any condition that they can't use those type of uh, e uh, motorized equipment there? Um, if they're doing it lawfully, then I'm not sure how we would restrict that. Yeah, I know we've had that. Uh, you know, Mark, I, I know he knows too. We, we know Mark and, and uh, he's fine. I, I don't want to even, I hate to even speak anything about it because we've been neighbors. But uh, uh, I know last year there were people there that had uh, ATVs and they would go up and down the ditch. And I finally had to go over one night and say, please, please, you know, we, we can't even sit on our deck. So it's. It was loud music. and Yeah, terrible loud music last year. And 10 o'clock is fine. That's bedtime. But before, when you want to listen, sit on your deck and listen to the birds or the creek running, it's on Battle Creek. So that's another thing that, you know, maybe it should be restricted to earlier with, with that type of thing, noise, uh, music, yelling. We had yelling, screaming, mm. uh, loud music. And then mm. when Arnett finally went over and, and we couldn't take it anymore, they did quit. But it's the idea we had to go over and complain. You know, it's just, we shouldn't have to do that. This is our home, and and it, it is hard when you have a home and all of a sudden things change. I, I recognize things do, but it's different when it's, it's a vacation home would have been fine with us mm -hmm. with a few people in his home, but 20 people over there and music and, and, and ATV use, that's, that's a lot to ask of a neighbor when we're used to cows. <laughs> Mr. I hope Chair. You really think about that. I'd love to say it just a vacation home. Let him rent it out we, as a home. We like Mark very well. Yeah. He's a he's a good neighbor. Yes. But we're just concerned about this request. Yes. Thank you. Go ahead, Charlie. Um there's a lot of compassion for the ATVs and the UTVs and the side by sides. Once they're licensed or permitted. Uh, it's very difficult, other than the sanctioning bodies that do that, to control them. Uh, we don't have any regulations through the planning and zoning that, w that would help you. Okay. Uh, also, you've got to remember that this is established as a review in one year. And I would afford myself of that review. We don't have a decibel meter, and we haven't set up any of our uh, regulations by decibel use yet. So uh, that can be a subjective type of call. Uh, the same music that might be at one volume might not bother you, and, and certainly a, a different kind of music with, a, with an electric guitar or something might drive you right up the wall. 
But what you need to do is stay aware with that and stay with Mark and let him know he doesn't want complaint basis. Uh, but we do have a one-year review on this and complaint. So uh, you've got to afford yourself of that being neighbors. And I, he expects that of it. But his quiet hours, his voluntary quiet hours, uh, I think they're a good thing. Yes, I, I think so too. And and maybe maybe Mark would just be kind enough to put that in his thing to say, you know, be aware of your neighbors and keep the noise sure. and the and the music down. We would appreciate that a lot. And he would probably do that because he's been a good neighbor. So, but uh, we wanted the resort thing really clarified for us because it yes. put, it scared us. It scared us. Yes. Yeah. Well, ma'am. Number one, I'd put his phone number on speed dial. So if anything were to come up, well, just call him, yep. and and he, he he will handle it. Second, you know, the physical structure is the same size, mm -hmm. whether it's called a vacation home or a special to resort. So, you know, it, if it were called a vacation home but still allowed the same number of people, okay. then we wouldn't have the same response from you, I think. Yes. So I think it's just all in the name yes. and, and how it's being called. That you know, what it's us. being called. Yeah. yeah. Ms. German. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, and, and I don't, this question isn't directed to you, but I just want to ask the staff to just clarify. So I know there's some, um, I don't know if they're classified as specialty resorts or if they're just resorts out in the Black Hills that actually rent ATVs and you know these kind of devices to their visitors. Uh, would that be allowed under this this current specialty resort conditional use permit? Those would be separate conditional uses. Okay. So uh, the ones that have uh, the rentals have a, a separate conditional oh, use permit for that because those those types of uses are very di different. different. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if anything like that came, it would have, it, you'd be notified. It would start the process okay. all over again for that use. So thank you so yes. much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Would we be notified next year before it's reviewed again? Then is that? No. It's published. It's, it's published. published. Okay. okay. Yeah, All right. You wouldn't. You wouldn't be re-notified okay. unless there's a change in use requested by the applicant. Okay. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much. Yep. Thank yep. you. Very Thank very you, much. Mark. Yep. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Thanks. I had a note uh, earlier that um, there was another person on a Zoom call. Amber, is that correct? No, that's uh, that's me, sir. Okay. Amber. Okay. Amber is my assistant. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, does anyone else w uh, wish to speak on this item? Okay. Um, sure, I'd venture out and try to get this in the record. I wrote up one for the quiet hours too that that was suggested as a. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, condition number fifteen, and I better get my glasses on for this. The resort shall provide the phone number and or internet address to clients regarding ascertaining the current day's fire conditions prior to the use of the fire pit. And then number 16, quiet hours of 10 p.m. through 7 a.m. shall be observed by the resort. Okay. Does anyone have any concerns with the additions to the um, conditions of approval? Does anyone wish to speak on that? I'm. Uh, I don't see any issues with the conditions that you want to add. I so I'll be in. Like I'll be in favor that of them. Changes 15 to 17. I'm sorry. So Jerry, I guess you're just saying insert them instead of add them to the end. All right. Okay. Noted. Um, Seeing no further requests for uh, discussion on this item, staff recommends approval of conditional use permit 2123, and now there would be 17 conditions. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries.
And then uh, true team, I see. I think I see what's happening here. It's the the very first page of the staff report has the item up in the upper left hand corner, and it's the right number. But then when you flip to the next page, it's been reduced by one. So just note that it, I think that maybe that's the confusion point. I, I got those fixed. Okay. You might have printed before I fixed that. As soon as I get the email, the print button just goes. <laughs> 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 so all right. Yeah. Maybe it's just me. Ignore what I said. <laughs> Agenda item number eight. Um, agenda item number eight is a conditional use permit CU 2127 to live in, a, I'm sorry, to live in a rec recreational uh, vehicle while building a residence and working on the subject property. The applicant is Jean Rossman. I don't see him in the audience. Um, the applicant is Jean Rosman. The subject property is 1.25 acres and zone rural residential district. The access is off of Pine Needle Court via an existing approach. There is no flood hazard. There is no special flood hazard area on the subject property. There are seven criteria for approving conditional use permit. The criteria are on the screen. Um, criteria one, it appears that by allowing this conditional use permit, it should not be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare of the public. Considering the temporary uh, nature of the applicant request. Criteria two, the applicant's resident was destroyed by fire and there are debris and junk car on his property. He has been working with the county and ordinance enforcement officer. Oh, make a correction. I put office instead of officer. So um, the county ordinance enforcement officer. The purpose of the requested use is to allow the applicant to live in his RV while cleaning up his property and building the uh, new residence. And the requested use will essentially improve the use and enjoyment of the subject property and, and the other properties in the neighborhood. Criteria three, allowing this conditional use permit should not affect the normal orderly development or improvement of any surrounding property in the area. Considering that the applicant is working on uh, the uh, on the subject property and the nature of the request use is temporarily until the residence is complete and uh, habitable and the RV will be uh, stored um, on the subject property. And criteria four, it appears that the utilities are already in place because there was once a uh, single family resident on the property before it was destroyed by the fire. And uh, the applicant stated that his RV will be connected to the, to the existing on-site wastewater treatment system. Criteria 5, access is off of the pine needle courts via an existing approach. Criteria 6, the current zoning is a rural, a rural residential district. The nature of the requested use is temporarily. Once the new resident is completed and habitat, the RV will be stored on the, on the property and disconnected from all utilities. Criteria seven, the future land use of the, of the subject property is rural residential district. Allowing this conditional use permit should be consistent with the current comprehensive plan. Okay. Um, the property is now is vacant because um, all the structure were removed, um, and that is a current violation case. Is C O V O twenty one forty one is a violation case for debris and junk car. The request was routed for interment interdepartmental review, no significant concern or objection were received. The subject property 
uh, like mentioned before, that that's a violation case, and the applicant has been working with um, the staff. And a site visit on May 12 showed that the applicant has be begun cleaning the property. The applicant stated that his timeline to build a new resident will be approximately two years. Um, staff received an email of concerns from uh, applicants' neighbors, and um, the email are uh, in the packet. Uh, staff recommended um, staff recommends of approval of conditional use permit CU twenty one twenty seven with eleven eleven conditions. Thank you. I have a quick question. When the ordinance officer goes out and there's a there's a violation set forth on this to clean up a site, um, it, how, is there a deadline that's put on such a thing? Um. I'm not sure, but I know that uh, Dwayne, the, our the, um, uh, audit and enforcement officer, he follow up with um, with the applicant, and then he has his schedule and calendar. Okay, I see up. Colin coming up. I must have. Colin McNeese, yeah. State's Attorney's Office. Mr. Chair, there's no hard and fast rule as far as that goes. If the person who has the violation uh, makes good faith efforts, then Dwayne will continue to work with them. Okay. And eventually, if the person stops, then it gets forwarded to my office. Okay. Mr. Chair, my question is similar, too. Uh, what about uh, the conditional use permit? Does it go in effect before the uh, violation is uh, removed or remitted? Um, and why I ask this is because one of the, it almost looks like one of the complaints looked at all our pictures that were in the book. <laughs> because it nails it one by one. And if those are still there, we certainly look remiss in not getting those cleaned up before we issue the the conditional use permit. I, 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 I'm, I'm tracking along with Charlie here, except I would go a little, a little bit more lenient and, and, and say that we would approve the conditional use permit. Guy's, guy's house burned down. Um, he's now in the process of cleaning it up. Neighbor says, yeah, I don't know if he's ever going to get that done. That's what I take out of this email that was provided to us. Um, I, I think that there just needs to be some sort of expectation that's set forth as far as the site cleanup and, and the mitigation of what has happened um, as a condition of the conditional use permit. I'd concur with that. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, yeah, Kathy. I, just, I wanted to speak in favor of that idea because it seems to me that in the past we have held certain conditional use permits. We've continued them until the cleanup of some violations get corrected. And, I, and, and maybe this one is being treated a little differently because of the cooperation or the progress or something, you know, toward that. But I mean, it just strikes me that um, because, it, you know, one of the conditions is that the nine, the property remains free of debris and junk vehicles. And granted, this is reviewed in a year. <clears throat> and if the cleanup is not complete in a year, then, of course, he's not meeting one of these conditions. But I don't think the neighbors should have to wait a year to ensure that the site gets cleaned up. Commissioner Johnson, I understand what you're saying. Uh, and it's my understanding this person is working with Dwayne. There's always an option to abate the property. I believe the planning director has the authority to abate, it, abate any property under $1,000. If it's over that, then it goes to the Board of Commissioners. Uh, so that's in addition to the violation of the zoning ordinance. So if you were to put it in as a condition, uh, then they would be potentially violating uh, an additional ordinance because it, it would be part of the condition. So then you could end the CUP uh, and then they're not following along with our 510. Um, I think there are a number of different options or avenues uh, through which the planning commission can take to try and incentivize uh, the applicant to clean up his property. And it's an unfortunate situation that his house burned down and now he's dealing with the rubble that came from his house burning down. No, excuse me, but I mean, I thought part of it was there's some debris, but there's also junk vehicles. That wouldn't have anything to do with the house burning down. No, but I, I'm sure that any person that has their house burning down, they want to get everything back uh, 
to order as far as the house goes so they can rebuild. Uh, and I assume that the house, this is all conjecture on my part, is gonna be in roughly the same area. And that would be, I assume, where a lot of the rubble would be. Um, but like I said, I think there's a lot of avenues through which the Planning Commission can go to incentivize this person to clean up the property. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Charlie. I would propose that we tie it to the two-year building permit because then that leaves it in the hands of our planning uh, and it does give him some time besides construction to get this done. He's going to get a house done in two years and it doesn't sound like it happened overnight either from the two uh, that rode in, but I, I I still agree that we've got to do something to make sure that it's done when this conditional use permit plus the uh, building permit is handled. So you're you're saying that um, I don't understand what what you're proposing. Well, the building permit's no good after two years. After two years. So. The planning folks have that, and now we're go actually going to have a completion process or occupancy. We didn't have a person to go out and check that in the past. We do now, as I understand it. We'll wait till Brittany gets done with her question, but I believe that's part of the process. That same person could have the obligation that to check off that this other is completed too before any consideration is done to to. Uh, give an occupancy. Uh, Brittany, with the new uh, uh, people working with the building side of it, are we going to have that checked uh, when occupancy happens uh, on the use of a building permit? Not at this time because we don't have building codes in place. Those codes yeah. would go in front of this commission first um, before that happens. The guidelines uh, aren't existing okay no um at this time though it, with this property it's a little unique in the fact that you know it might have had violations prior and then the home burnt down so that just compounded to existing violations um you know with him living on the property it might be because things are there and he's there and he's able to to probably get things done a little quicker um, because he knows that, one, the conditional use permit is in place. Um, there's no way for us to really condition the building permit um, on, yeah. you know, that's kind of a separate issue under the nuisance order. Then my second one would be, can we tie it with the yearly review that it has to be completed by the yearly review? That would, be up to this, that would be up to this condition or this commission if right. they wish to have this conditional use permit condition that these things take place in I think that provides how about you does that provide him sufficient time to get these other things straightened out while he's building and, and operating under the conditional use permit I believe a year is is a fair amount of time to get okay. um, I ahead, think Kathy. that's even longer than typically Dwayne you know gives people as far as progress he likes to see see things what if we switch the review to six months you could do that also that was my excuse that was me, thinking that. I, that was my thought too. I think that you know, consider and I didn't go look at the property, so I, uh, but considering the descriptions and and so on, I I think the review should happen before a year. I think it should be a shorter time, six months, maybe even three months. I, if just to make sure that that this this violation is closed, and that they can then you know, move on. Catherine, the only reason I said six months is these folks are really having a difficult time getting materials and orders and final things put together right now on these, and it's tremendous costs on that. There's a lot of shopping time and, well, and phone I'm time I'm not involved. suggesting that we, we worry about the con new construction. Right. I just think that there's there's some this violation that some of that has to do with the house burning, no question, but then there's other aspects of it too that... I think can get cleaned up here. Summer's coming. It's going to be warm. If it's not done in three months, it's there, to me, there's an issue there. So that'd be my suggestion is to move up the review to three months. Further questions for staff on this item? Does anybody in the audience wish to speak on this item? Seeing none. 
Um, staff recommends approval of conditional use permit CU 21-27. And I've heard several items. One was six months and one was three months. I'm good with either of them because I, I just think that the check process and the expectation needs to be set out there for the applicant that uh, this will be, be followed up on um, along with his progress on this conditional use permit. So. I refer again that the only reason I want to give him six months is I hope he gets out. He needs the weather to build too. And it is going to take some time to do the cleanup. He's going to have to do, accomplish both or get some help. And um, I would, and six months might give him time. It's even tough to get contractors yeah. uh, to help him do things. So at least we would be reviewing it and, and have some opportunity to see either progress or completion. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. And, and, and if it's six months, it's, I mean, I'm not going to um, make a fuss about that, but I, I will say this is that it, it strikes me that a homeowner, a property owner that intends to construct would want this resolved sooner rather than later. And resolution in three months would allow him to move on um, <clears throat> and proceed with construction and, and do all of that. You know, why wait? for six if he can get it done in three. And he, I know he's not here, he can't speak for that, you know, to answer that question. Um, but to me, that's the, that's the other side of the coin. I'll wait for a motion to come forward with the suggestion. I'm good with either. I move that we approve the uh, permit with the three month review. Is there a second? I'll second that motion. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item nine. Item, oh, Cody Sack, Environmental Planner. Item 9 is Layout Plan LPL 21-25. It's to subdivide and create lots 1 and 2 of RDS subdivision. The applicant and landowner is Lorraine and Doug Smith. Uh, the agent is Fist Land Surveying. Janelle is in the audience if there's any questions. Currently, as the property sits, there's a single-family residence with a detached garage and a tool shed, all of which have proper building permits. And there is an on-site wastewater treatment system. On May 18, 2021, the Board of Adjustment approved subdivision regulation variance SV 21-06 to waive percolation tests and profile hole information. Access is off of Neck Yoke Road. There is no special flood hazard on that property. The proposed lots, lot one will be 17.04 acres and will be vacant of any structures. Lot two will be 3.0 acres and will contain all of the buildings that were listed above as well as the septic permit. This was right around for interdepartment review. County Highway came back and said that an approach permit would be required for proposed lot one. Uh, this will be done during the building permit process. Uh, as for the purposes of a layout plan, staff finds no significant issues with the request and recommends approval of LPL 21-25 with conditions. Thank you. Could you um, help me through the analysis portion of this? Um, it says the property is currently zoned rural residential district, which requires a three acre lot size. On June 23rd, it'll be rezoned agricultural district, which requires a 10 acre lot size. Therefore, if the minor plat is filed prior to June 23rd, the Register of Deeds, then proposed lot two will require a rezone or lot size variance. Do you know how this is planned to come through? So that was that was more put in there for our record. Uh, there's there's no way that the plat would be filed by June 23rd. So it was just put in there for in the future, like 10, 20 years down the line, we understood what, what happened. Okay. Um, basically what happened was when we readopted our our uh, the new comprehensive plan things got rezoned um, and we're going through the process of fixing that. So things that were zoned, that were rezoned back in February are being rezoned back to what they were previously. And that's going to go into effect before this plats in effect. So this property got rezoned from ag to, um, I think is it rural residential? 
a right. rural residential district. Okay. And on the 23rd, it's going back to to agriculture, okay. which requires 10 acres. So lot two will require a, a rezone. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. Any questions for staff on this item? Just one, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Chair. Um, operating permits, do we list them or if there, I, I know that if there wasn't one there, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Do we list those when we go through a uh, review for something? Um, for certain things we do, yes. Um, for the platting purposes, just saying that for the fact that they have an, uh, a septic system on the property is, is the history of the property that we're going with. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Under conditions, um, number seven and number nine are the same, so we could probably reduce by one. Oh. Yep. Yeah, okay, on. we'll strike number nine. For the questions for staff on this item? Seeing none, does anyone in the audience wish to speak on this item? Good morning, Janelle Fink with Fisk Land Surveying. I'm here on behalf of the Smiths. Can we strike stipulation or condition 10? This property is not located off of Forest Road. I think that that was just a misprint from a different report. These properties are off Neck Yoke Road. So I think. 10 needs to go away. Correct. Yes. Do, so a quick clarification. Do we say that both lots use the existing approach off of Neck York Road or just strike it all together? Just strike it all together. They won't be using an, an existing approach. County Highway will, um, said that lot one will need its own approach. Okay. Thank you for the clarification. So we're striking items nine and, nine, and number 10. Further comments, clarifications? Hearing none, seeing none, uh, staff recommends approval of layout plan LPL 21-25, noting that um, the conditions nine and 10 are not included. Is there a motion? I'd make that as a motion. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 10. Item 10 is, L, is layout plan LPL 21-26. It's to combine and create tract 35 revised of Rushmore Ranch Estate Subdivision. The applicant is Dana Kirstead. Currently, as the property sits, there are no buildings on the property. They are vacant, and there is no on-site wastewater treatment system. Access to the, the properties are off of Hermosa Court. There is no special flood hazard area. Track 35 revised will be 29.57 acres, will be vacant any structures, and it will have a section line that traverses north and, north and south through the proposed property. Well, this was routed around for interdepartment review. There were no comments or con major comments or concerns received. Uh, improvement or dedication of a section nine right away is required or an approved subdivision regulation variance be obtained to waive the requirement and percolation and, pro and soil profile hole information will be required or an approved uh, Subdivision regula regulation variance be obtained to waive the requirement. For the purposes of a layout plan, staff finds no significant issues and recommends approval of layout plan LPL 21 26 with conditions. Thank you. Are there questions for staff on this item? Noting none, um, staff recommends approval of layout plan LPL 21 26 with seven conditions. Is there a motion? I'll move approval. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Noting none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 11. Item 11 is minor plot MPL 21-29. It is to subdivide and create lots one and two of Marshall Gulch subdivision number two and to dedicate right away. The applicant and landowner are Shane and Chad Swedland. The agent is Fist Land Surveying. Janelle is in the audience if there are any questions. Currently as the property 
Since it is vacant of any structure, there is no on-site wastewater treatment system. On May 18th, 2021, the Board of Adjustment approved subdivision regulation variances SV21-09 and 21-10 to waive percolation requirement and profile hole information and to waive the requirement to dedicate and improve the section line right away. Access will be off of an approach off of Marshall Gulch Road. There is special flood hazard area on the property 100 year flood plain. For the proposed lots, lot one and two will both be 2.38 acres and are vacant of any structures. They are on June 1st uh, going in front of the board to request a lot size variance. This was routed around for interdepartment review. There were no objections or concerns received. And on December 15th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved layoff plan LPL 20-35 with 14 conditions. For the purposes of the minor plot, staff finds no significant issues and are recommending approval with five conditions. Thank you. Questions for staff on this item? Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this item? Noting none, uh, staff recommends approval of minor plan MPL 21-29 with five conditions. Is there a motion? I'd make a motion to approve. I second. Motion and second for approval. Further discussion? Noting none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 12. Morning, Commissioners. Jason Thennison, Assistant Planning Director. Agenda item number 12 is minor plat 21-27 to subdivide and create tract A and tract B of Glendale Load number 1, MS1111. The applicant is TDG Real Estate. Mike Gennaro is the agent. Uh, location is east of the intersection of Playhouse Road and Oak Meadow Road. Proposed, or the, uh, as it says today, the property is 8.79 acres, zone ranchette district. Uh, existing land use is vacant. Uh, proposed lots, you can see on the right-hand side of your screen, tract A will be three acres and it will be vacant of any structures and utilities, and tract B will also be vacant of structures and utilities and will be 5.8 acres. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. Register of Deeds did come back with one comment stating that the owner acknowledgement needs to reflect Michael Gennaro is signing on behalf of TDG Real Estate, LLC, and this is included as a condition of approval. No other objections or concerns were received. Uh, staff's analysis of the request is that the Board of Commissioners approved um, or continued rezone 21-14 and comprehensive plan amendment 21-08 to the July 6, 2021 Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, that will satisfy a condition of approval if approved. Uh, staff finds no other significant issues with the applicant's request as it appears to be in harmony with the existing lots and current land uses in the area and recommends approval with conditions. Thank you. A uh, quick question I had was on the 40 foot wide access easement um, established this plat. Is access to tract uh, B as in boy at the very end of that? It's the only thing I saw. I thought, how are they going to get there? So they come in through that road through the middle that's a little bit south of the property line that's going to be delineated. Yep. And then so at the very end of that curvy line, is that how access to tract B happens? From the south, yes, that's what it appears to be. Right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the only question I had. Further questions for staff? Noting none. Um, sir, I want to make sure you're not here to speak on this item. No? Okay. Staff recommends approval of minor plat MPL 2127 with uh, eight conditions. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second for approval. Further discussion? Noting none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries item 13. Agenda item number 13 is layout plan 21-28 to combine lots in order to create lot 8R of Burns Placer MS697. The applicant is Jeff Hermanson. He is in the audience if you have any questions for him. His surveyor is Sperla Consulting. The location of the property is north of the intersection of Marshall Gulch Road and Deerfield Road. Proposed lot size will be 1.26 acres. It's currently zoned rural residential district. Access is off of Deerfield Road and there is special flood hazard area on the property. Um, as it sits, uh, we're talking about three separate lots. First lot is 0.51 acres vacant of any structures utilities. The next lot is 0.56 acres. 
contains a single fame residence built in 1944, as well as an on-site wastewater treatment system. And the final lot is 0.19 acres, contains a shed and a carport with no building permit on file. Uh, we're just asking the applicant to work with us to uh, get the dimensions of those and verify setbacks. That is listed as a condition of approval. The proposed lot will be lot 8R of Burns Placer MS697, will contain the single family residence shed and carport as well as the on-site wastewater treatment system. Request was sent out for interdepartmental review. Uh, highway department came back with a statement that said an approach permit for the existing approach must be filed with the highway department. This is included as a condition of approval as well as the uh, county floodplain main floodplain manager had a comment stating that the 100 year floodplain limits must be identified on the minor plat in accordance with FEMA maps it is also included as a condition of approval and with that staff finds no significant issues with the applicants request as it appears to be in harmony with the existing lots and current land uses in the area and recommends approval thank you questions for staff uh, mr chairman go ahead so how would uh, this approach have been allowed in the first place if it wasn't approved uh, I think that structure has been there since the 40s, so okay. that approach has probably been there since then. And okay. County Highway probably just doesn't have a permit on file for it. Is there a cost for that permit? That I would have to follow up on to find out. Okay. So further, further questions for staff? Noting none, staff recommends approval of layout plan LPL 2128 with 10 conditions. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Noting none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 14. Agenda item 14 and 15 concern the same property. There. Hold on a second. I would just like to say that I'm going to recuse myself from items 14, 15, and 16 because my husband represents the applicant. And... Um, Maybe I will just stick around then. I'll leave the room, but I, I'll come back because... If time allows? Yeah. Got it. 17 also or just... 30. 17 also? Isn't that the same? Is it there's three? I thought there was three, three 14, with, uh, 15, yep. and 16. And 14, 15, and 16. Yeah, with Mr. Bolt, yeah. Correct. Okay. Go ahead. So agenda item 14 and 15 concern, uh, concern the same properties. Uh, there are rezones and comprehensive plan amendments. So if you don't mind, I'll just combine the two of those together and just run through this. Uh, Go ahead. I have to have them separate. You have to have them separate, yeah. okay. Okay, agenda item number 14 is rezone 21-15 to rezone to rural residential district. The applicant and landowner is Lyndon Bolt, operating under GL Development Company, LLC. The agent is Renner Associates. Uh, location is 12807 Old Hill City Road. Uh, size of the requested properties is 3.27 acres. Uh, existing land use is residential and agriculture. Access is off Old Hill City Road. Staff recommends a, to continue rezone 21-15 to the June 28th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Thank you. Questions for staff on this one? Noting none, uh, staff recommends to continue comprehensive plan amendment CA 21-10 to the June 28th planning commission meeting. Is there a motion? I'd move to continue. Second. Motion and second to continue. Item 14. Agenda item 14 and 15 concern the same property. Is there a motion? I'll move to continue. Second. Motion and second to continue. Item 14. For the discussion. Noting none, um, staff, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 15. Agenda item 15 is rezone 21-15 to rezone to rural residential district. Um, happy again is Lyndon Bolt. Landowner is GL Development Company, LLC, and staff recommends to continue comprehensive or rezone 21-15 to the June 28th Planning Commission meeting. Thank you. Questions for staff on this one? Noting none, staff recommends to continue rezone RZ 21-15 to the June 28th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Is there a motion? I move that continuance. Second. Motion and second for continuance. Uh, further discussion? Noting none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 16. 
Agenda item 16 is preliminary plat 21 24 to create lots one through six of Elkhorn Estates. The applicant again is Lyndon Bolt, operating under GL Development Company LLC. His agent is Renner Associates LLC. Location is 12807 Old Hill City Road. Project size is 30.27 acres, currently zoned ranch and rural residential district. So we are talking about three separate properties. The first property is vacant of any structures and utilities. The second property contains a single family residence and a detached garage as well as an on-site wastewater treatment system. And the third property contains a greenhouse, a pole barn, as well as an on-site wastewater treatment system. Uh, future lots, uh, talking about the access here, access to proposed lots one and two will be off of Old Hill City Road via a portion of section line labeled on the plat as a 33 foot wide access easement. Access to lots three and four will be via 66 foot wide access and utility easement leading to a 40 foot wide access easement. And lastly, access to proposed lots five and six will be via 66 foot wide access and utility easement. Proposed lot one will be 5.022 acres and vacant of any structures and utilities. Lot two will be 4.5 acres and vacant as well. Lot three will be 3.7 acres, will contain the pole barn, which will require a conditional use permit. Lot four will be 5.4 acres, contain the single family residence as well as detached garage, greenhouse, and on site wastewater treatment system. Lot 5 will be 6.6 .6 acres and vacant. Lot 6 will be 3.8 acres and vacant. Request was sent out for interdepartmental review. Emergency services stated that the applicant needs to provide 911 with an alternate street name as Elkhorn is already an approved street name in Rapid City. And this is included as a condition of approval. County Highway came back with a few uh, statements. The first being an approach permit will need to be obtained for the shared access for lot one and lot two on the section line. Also that an approved variance will be required in order to have two approaches off of proposed lot two. That an existing, that any roads built along or within section lines be built to ordinance 14 standards. And lastly, that an approach permit for the existing promote, approach uh, must be filed with the county highway department. And these are all, these will all either be addressed through the building permitting process or through conditions of approval and no other objections or concerns were received. Staff's analysis of the request is on May 18th of this year, the Board of Commissioners approved subdivision regulations variance 21-11 in order to not dedicate or improve section lines. Approval of this satisfied condition number seven of layout plan 21-02. They also approved relocation of section line RS 21-01 and approval of that uh, satisfied condition number eight of layout plan 21-02. The applicant's agent submitted a rezone 21-15 and comprehensive plan amendment 21-10, which was previously heard at this meeting. And approval of this will, con will satisfy condition number 10 of layout plan 21-02 and condition number eight of this request. The applicant's request appears to be in harmony with the existing lots and current land uses in the area. And therefore, staff recommends approval of preliminary plat 21-24 with conditions. Thank you. Questions for staff on this item? Noting none, uh, I want to make sure no one in the audience wishes to speak on this item. Noting none, uh, staff recommends approval of preliminary plat PPL 21-24 with nine conditions. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item 17. Good morning, commissioners. Again, item 17 is conditional use permit CU 21-28 to allow an accessory structure, a pole barn as a primary structure in an agriculture district. Uh, staff is recommending to continue this conditional use permit. I do have in the staff report to the June 28, 2021 meeting, uh, but the applicant did come into the office on Friday and pay for the re-advertising and uh, worked with staff to get his letters. Um, so I am requesting that to change to the June 14, 2021 me Planning Commission meeting as the letters were not sent out and the request must be re-advertised. Mr. Chair? No, go ahead. Just a question, June 14 or 28? It's June 14th, because he did come in on Friday to be able to get that advertised. Make that as a motion, time. Mr. Chair. 
to continue. Um, until June 14. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second to continue conditional use permit 21-28 to the June 14th, 2021 uh, meeting. Further discussion? Noting none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 18. Item 18 is Ordinance Amendment 0821-09 to amend Section 508 Zoning or Rezoning of the Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the reason for this update is to update Section 508 to be consistent with state statutes and to remove the requirement for return receipt mail. A couple of things on this that um, I wanted to go through uh, with the return receipt mail. Um, that isn't a requirement in state statute. It was a requirement in our previous ordinance. Um, just with that reduction, it's going to save um, property owners about $4 a letter. Um, so that's pretty significant as far as, um, and it'll still meet the state requirements for notice. Um, one other thing um, to note in here is that under the comprehensive plan amendments, uh, there was a requirement to send out um, just first class mail uh, to all agricultural users within yeah. two miles. Um, that also is not a state requirement. Um, and it seems somewhat onerous, especially on lots that are somewhat dense that could be hundreds of of letters. And finally, the other um, big change is that comprehensive plan amendments won't always be required. Um, it will only be required in an instance where they are asking for a zoning district that's m more restrictive than the future land use. Uh, so for example, if the future land use is rural residential, and they're going from ag to ranchette, because ranchette is actually less restrictive than rural residential, then we're not going to change our comprehensive plan amendment. Um, because it actually is in harmony, it's actually less restrictive. So changing our comprehensive plan every single time um, seems somewhat onerous and unnecessary. Because if our future land use looked at three acre lots and they're going to five acre lots, um, it's still in harmony. So those are some of the big changes un under this amendment. Thank you, questions for staff on this item? I have a question. I don't know that it's one of the changes, um, but. The notification by county auditor, if abutting other county, how does the auditor's office get that information? They get that information from staff in our office. Okay. So if it is abutting, um, that is actually in statute. So that is required. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Just a question under, under A on the third paragraph. Certified mail with return receipt. Yes, that's in the old part, okay. in the old, and we're removing the return receipt. Okay, um, good. Thank you. Because statute just says uh, certified mail or um, I think a way more expensive um, mailing requirement. So if certified mail, I checked with uh, Joan in the office, and that'll reduce it down to a little over $4 a mailing versus $7, a little over $7. Hmm. So it's pretty significant. Go ahead, Kathy. So the change on the, maybe I don't have this quite right, but the change from the, in the, res, in the uh, agriculture from the <coughs> two mile, notifying two miles, what has that been changed to? It's just within the 500 feet. Oh, 500. That's where, mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Okay. So it's consistent with other notification requirements for our variances and our conditional use permits. Uh -huh. um, it will make this more um, uniform throughout <coughs> the process. <coughs> So my question is regarding the comprehensive plan amendment changes. If it's, if it's uh, within harmony uh, of the existing uh, plan such that it's, it's, it's becoming, uh, the, the restrictions aren't, aren't changing per se. Um, in some instances, we'll have comprehensive plan amendments come forth. And in others, you're saying that we won't. What is going to be your process then to track those and make sure that they happen? I'm trying to understand. Uh we do that already with rezones. So when rezones are approved, when this board recommends them to the Board of Commissioners and they're approved, um, once they go effective, then staff goes in to the actual GIS maps. We make those changes and then they're updated in the electronic file. So then those, um, as the rapid map and as um, is updated, they're updated every night. So then those would reflect after that waiting period. Okay, thank you. Questions for staff on this? Noting none. 
And noting that there's no one else in the audience, um, staff is recommending approval of ordinance amendment uh, 21-09. Is there a motion? Approval. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. County Board Report 19. Uh, the Board of Commissioners concurred with the Planning Commission's recommendations from the May 10th, 2021 Planning Commission meeting with the exception of preliminary plat 21-17, Keith Lau, to subdivide and create lots 5R and 5B of Lau subdivision. Uh, the Board of Commissioners actually continued this item. Um, Brittany, can I ask when it was continued to, and I sh I'll notify the person that had called me to bring up the matter. Sure, do you and or to the June 1st meeting. June 1st? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, noting uh, that there's no items from the public, uh, items from staff. Uh, just an update on the special planning commission meeting from May 17th that the resolution was approved and forwarded and the board of commissioners will um, review that uh, resolution at their June 2nd meeting at 2 p.m. Okay. Anything else from staff? No, not at this time. Okay. Items from the membership. Did I miss June 1st or June 2nd? Did you? June 2nd for the this commissioners for the extension of, of Laos deal? No, June 1st. Oh, so the board of which one? Has a June 1st meeting and then they have a special meeting on June 2nd at 2 p.m. for the resolution. Okay. Of I just want to make sure that I wasn't mm. sleeping at the switch here. No. Nope. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yep. Kathy. I, I just want to say that the first meeting in June, I think it's June 14, I will not be here. Okay. Thank you. Anything else from the membership? Okay. Um, item 23 is adjournment. Is there a motion? Move to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Okay. Noting none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. We're adjourned.